This is season number 19 of Bass Talk Live with Matt Pangraff. BTL is presented by Bass Cat Boats, Aftco, Strike King Lures, Sunline, Big Bite Baits, Spro, X Zone Lures, Gamakatsu, The Bass Tank, Denali Rods, and Pro Guide Batteries. Hit them with the hook, Jeffries. PTL, coming at you. Good morning once again, and we are back. Just as the show ended this morning with Johnny Schultz from Fish the Moment, a video dropped on all of Kevin Van Dam's social media profiles on the first day of MLF BPT competition. And in the statement, which was roughly three and a half, four minutes long, uh, Kevin Van Dam announced that this is going to be his last year fishing professionally on tour. Now, he stopped short of calling it a retirement, saying he is not retiring, and he looks forward to being a voice for fishing, the outdoors, and conservation in the next chapter of his life. But apparently, it appears, as far as the Bass Pro Tour and the Bassmaster Elite Series 2023 will be the last year after 30-plus years the majority of it as the number one angler in the world uh, that this will be Kevin Van Dam's last year of competing. Uh, pulled some strings. We have a couple of guests immediately. Like I said, this literally dropped 15 minutes ago. I saw a, a video version of it this morning before it actually went live. Was not sure when he was going to drop it. Uh, a, uh, a big shout out to our two guests today. The first one he is traveling is none other than, well, probably Kevin Van Dam's best friend in the world. And that is the one and only Mark Zona. Mark, last minute, like literally this dropped five minutes ago. Thank you for pulling over and taking time to join BTL for this breaking news segment. Absolutely, man. It was, uh, you know, it's, it's strange. It's, uh, it was a little bit of a surprise this morning, but not a surprise if that makes sense i i was able to you know i talked to kevin a little bit this morning um i'm not sure that it went out exactly the way that at least the video uh that that they were um planning on but it uh look man the, the best way to put it panger is is uh it kevin and i would talk you know mm -hmm. about that about his you know retirement and and I could tell that it was you know, just two weeks ago we were at lunch, and I could tell you didn't you didn't come right out and say it, but it, you know without saying the exact words, I could tell that it was uh, it it was getting really really close. And if you know the other the other side of it is is you know Kevin opened up um, from a from a ter professional tournament. I go back to to what, when, I, gosh, man, growing up on the south side of Chicago, the one thing that that Kevin did um, was show the country, and and it was strange because he was such an ano anomaly coming into the Bassmaster, you know, tournament trail. He showed the country you could be from the north and and be dominant. Um, be, because there really had never been, that was the, the one thing that I'll always remember when I was in my late teens and early twenties, um, that he was able to show an unbelievable amount of consistency. And not only that, I, to this day, and I, and I would talk about it, Panger, when I would cover him for, for so many years on, on Bassmaster, uh, the elite series and Bassmaster mm -hmm. live. He fished in a way that, especially Tennessee River stuff, and, and I can go on and on, mm -hmm. but he fished in a way that we don't do up here. And where, to the right now, where he learned that hell, dude, I have no hey, idea. Mar Mark, I got to interrupt you. Uh, right now, we're going to bring him in. We're going to see if he has the service. Uh, that is Kevin Van Dam live right now uh, on the show. Like I said, spotty service where he's headed. Kevin actually fishes tomorrow for the first uh, BPT event. Kevin, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you, Matt. 
Okay, I've got uh, your buddy Zona on. Like I said, this was a weird deal that went down this morning. I had someone with 150 Instagram followers direct message me and said, this is going to be a topic on the show. And I click on it and it's your retirement video. And it has like 17 views. And I'm like, what the heck is this? So I call some other people in the industry and I'm like, hey, I've got to redo my show this morning. And they're like, what the hell are you talking about? And no one knows what's going on. Then I see it's a private video, so I didn't go with it. And then all of a sudden it drops at the end of the show. So thank you for taking the time to be on. And I guess congratulations. God, we'll see if we can get Kevin, if we can hear him. He froze up, Mark. He did, didn't he? That's the only time, Kevin. Yeah, I got you there. Kevin, you got me? Can you hear can you hear me, Kevin? Oh no. I got nothing, man. Oh, okay. We can kind of hear you. How about now? No, maybe we'll get Kevin. All right, let's go back to you, Mark. And maybe if we get Kevin, we'll get him. Continue on with your thought there about the way he fished. It it was it was it was such a, a you know, from the Gosh, and again, I'm saying this from way before Kevin and I ran around together to watch the style that he fished. Um, it was just something that that we don't that, that's not how we grow up up here in Michigan. And I will tell you, you know, I, I covered so many, so many of his victories, whether they were classic victories, um, just regular Bassmaster tournament wins or Angler of the Year titles. Um it the, here's what's really strange, Panger, is I, I've never covered anybody on the Bassmasters ever that I could tell after the first day of being around him. I'd look at Tommy and 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 I would say it. I wouldn't say it when we were live, but I would say this tournament is over. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I, it will it will go down. It will go down. Um, as as the best tournament career ever in the history of bass fishing, there is no doubt in my mind. Yeah, I think that's 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 saying something. Uh... I did tell Kevin this morning when we talked. I said your release of your video was frighteningly similar to Tom Brady's sort of retirement. Last it, year. it was. Can you hear? Can you hear us now, Kevin? Yeah, I'm trying to find a better spot. Uh, it's it go, It's been going in and out, and I apologize. Oh, no, that's fine. Think, Thank you this... for jumping on. Go ahead and talk about it. The video came out today, and I think it shocked everybody, me included. <laughs> yeah, well, it's something that, um, you know, everybody knows that it, at some point you've got to, you know, it, it's got to end, right? And I just wanted to do it on my own terms. And, you know, I'm 55 years old. This is my 33rd season on, on the tour. And it's, it's a grind, you know, I'm, I'm definitely uh, with my wife, Sherry, and just where we're at in our lives and that uh, looking for a little more flexibility in my schedule. Like I said, I, I'm not retiring by any means, but, but the tournament is, a it's, you know, lifestyle, it, it's tough. And the schedule is, you know, it's not flexible at all. So um, it's just, you know, I don't know. It, it took me a while to come to that conclusion that this is what I wanted to do. And um, so here we are. We're, and that's been like the scariest, most exciting, uh, most anxious that I've been. It's worse than leading the Bassmaster Classic going into the final day and knowing you run out of fish, you know. So it's just one of those I've never been in in a spot like this before with these type of feelings. So it's, 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 it's bittersweet for sure. Uh, I'm feeling those emotions now, Mark, I think I can tell up at the top of the corner of your screen, you're feeling those emotions now. I mean, you defined and continue to define an era and, and, and redeveloped how tournament fishing is, is done at the top level. Was there a moment? I mean, was it when you made your last cast last year? Was it during the off season? Was there a moment when you said I am done or has this been kind of a, a recent revelation? Um, no, it, it, there, I have no moment. It's something that, um, gosh, I've talked about with my roommates before. I've talked a lot about it with Davey. Um, you know, just 
there's going to be a day, right? And mm-hmm. I just think that in the state of the sport and, you know, my career and where I'm at just personally and, you know, with my age and, and where I'm at in my, in my career that I'm just, I'm looking forward to um, what's next. You know, it's just like, um, I, I still love tournaments and I can tell you next season when this turn, when the tour starts, it's, it's, it's going to be hard, but, uh, you know, I've, I'm good with it. You're not going to, I'll promise you, you're not going to see me come back out of retirement. Um, you know, <laughs> no from Grady's. This, so. men, men. Oh, he got a call. That's what happens when you have a call there. Uh, Zoda, I know you have to go. You've got a lot of, you, you're on, on your way, way to, uh, to an event. There you go. KVD's back. I, I don't know if you, you back Kevin. And he's it's not going to have, it. yep. That's fine. Hey, we've got Zona in the top corner. Zona's on his way to event. You're on your way to your event. Mark, any initial words for Kevin? Just kind of to talk directly. I know how far you guys go back. Well, I did. I, I talked to Kevin a little bit this morning, and I, you know, most of all, and I, I truly mean this. I, I mean this from my heart. Um, Kevin, Kevin's family, and yeah, you. I, I knew this day was coming. This day for sure was coming. But I, I, I mean this um, sincerely. Uh, covering. Kevin, uh, there was, there was years, there was tournaments. Um, there was days, there was days and granted, look outside of, you know, tournament, obviously Kevin fishes where he fishes and I work where I work. Um, Kevin and I work in the industry together almost daily. Um, on, you know, we share a lot of the same sponsors, but from a tournament standpoint, um, I, I've covered a lot of, a lot of events covering Kevin, uh, at times was covering perfection in bass fishing tournament history. And and I mean this, it was a kick ass honor, uh, Kevin. I, I don't want to get choked up because I know we're going to celebrate on our <laughs> own terms, uh, but it was badass. And I, <laughs> yeah, and I we loved will. It. I, I absolutely loved it. I've had a lot of fun, you know, and, and um, I've, made uh so many great friends over the years and there's just uh, you know i i love uh, so many people at bass and at jm you know those guys really defined uh what tournaments what tournament coverage should be years and years ago um you you know definitely blazed the the trail and i mean those those years uh, when ESPN owned bass and th- like when Mark started loudmouth bass and you know, that was the <laughs> beginning of, to me, of the, of, to, of the greatest era in bass fishing, you know, where it brought it, um, you can say what you want, but those ESPN years brought bass fishing to the mainstream sports fan. And that's, that's when those were some of the funnest times, you know, through that, through that period there that we've had. So it's, you know, I, I love so many people. It's been a very emotional day for me. Just watching that video myself chokes me up. I just look at those pictures and, uh, you know, I have all these, it doesn't seem like it's been 32 years already, you know, and it's flown by. Um, I've had a lot of fun. And uh, again, just the relationships of what's been really special and the, and the people are what makes our sport special. I think Com- compared to other sports and maybe, maybe it's that way in the NFL, but I, I don't think it's that way. I, I think our group as a whole is the, the close knit family and um, definitely Zona's are family to me. Mercer's are family to me. Um, a lot of my friends on tour, um, you know, are, I just, I mean, I, t- I told my nephew last night, I told, I told my brothers and sisters just yesterday. So we've, we've tried to keep it, you know, close to the vest and, and it's really came, came out or came along very quickly. This, this whole announcement, I wanted to do it before the season started, before I made my first cast. And I just, I want to enjoy, I want to enjoy this year, you know, and I want to appreciate it. And I want to appreciate all the fans and the fan support. So we're going to do a lot of fun things. And, um, and it's just like, it's a, it's a great relief to me uh, just to have the, to have the news out there. 
Kevin, like I said, congratulations. Uh, go over to any of your social media accounts uh, and you can listen to it. It's a well done. It's about three minutes. And like you said, uh, you made a point that you are not retiring from the industry. You're retiring from professional fishing. You still a voice for fishing, the outdoors and conservation, looking forward to the next chapter. So elated that you are still, I know that you have a great affinity for the Bass, uh, the Bass Fishing Hall of Fame. Uh, I know that you have a lot of uh, passion projects, uh, how closely Johnny is with conservation conservation uh and your relationship with there and then also product development so it's not like you're going away it's just that 2023 when it comes to the bpt when it comes to the elite series when when 2023 closes that's your last cast at the top level of professional fishing and and i can't believe i just said that yeah <laughs> seems kind of weird but uh uh i i like i say i think it's mm -hmm. uh for me it, it's the it's the right time and it's it's the right decision for me and my family and and i'm going to like say enjoy this season and we've got a lot of a lot of fun things that we got on the horizon coming so hell of a farewell tour though if you're at, at any yeah. of the bpt stops if you're anywhere you can come out and and root you on shake your hand and and thank you for what you've contributed and what we can continue to contribute to the industry for the last three plus decades yep yeah i'm gonna try to be as visible as i can so it's uh I, again, I'm just looking forward to having a lot of fun. Awesome. Any last words, Z? Uh, again, uh, many, many congrats. I did. I sent Kevin a pretty funny text this morning. I said, uh, <laughs> seriously, many congrats on a very kick-ass tournament career, uh, but you're $20 poorer because he lost a Super Bowl bet. But uh, we're going to have a big <laughs> we're going to yep. have a big time when I see Kevin in a week. But uh, I mean this, Kevin, from my heart. Uh, huge congrats to you and your family. It's been a, a heck of a ride to be a, a small part of it. You, oh, dude, you've been a huge part of it. And, um, you know, I love you like a brother. And we're going to, we will have, we will have a time next week. So we're going to Whiskey Myers, baby. <laughs> we are. We are. <laughs> Both of you guys, Kevin, Mark, thank you very much. This was a last minute deal, like I said, that went down in the past 30 minutes. Cannot thank you enough for taking time, both pulling over and talking big. Uh, that means a lot to me that you guys were able to do that. So thank you very much. See you, Panger. You bet, man. Go catch him in Florida, see Kevin. Ya. Yep. See you. All right. See you. All right. That was Mark Zona and Kevin Van Dam breaking news. Kevin Van Dam announcing that he will no longer be fishing professionally following the 2023 season. And in a moment like this, there is only one man that we can go to who will put KVD's career into historical perspective. And that is the one and only Ken Duke. So we will get Ken Duke dialed up on location from fishing tackle retailer, who will talk about the significance of KVD's career, what he has meant and some of the records that will never be broken. We'll take a quick break, get Ken Duke in the studio and be back. This is breaking news on Monday, February 13th on BTL KVD just announcing that 2023 will be his last season on tour. And we will be back with Ken Duke right after this. The new Puma STS has been redesigned from the ground up. With the angler, design, function, and performance in mind, nothing on this new offering was compromised, and the only thing carried over from the previous version is the name. Based on the soft touch series hull that started with the flagship Jaguar, this new model is nimble and performs incredibly well at all speeds with either a 250 or 300 horsepower engine. Featuring a new 96 inch wide body footprint, this hull measures out at 20 foot 7 inches in length. Industry-leading design coupled with tournament-winning performance. The Puma STS from BassCat. Feel the rush. Everything you need. One legendary brand. Top on all. Strike King. Hey guys, Gerald Swindle, representing the AFCO Hydronaut. This is the jacket I love wearing when times is tough, and I'm talking about the weather, not the fishing. The jacket, what I like, I got a double cup right here. I can seal up the bottom of my jacket, because when you're fishing, you're holding your arms up, you're bad about getting water, it runs downhill. Everything bends good, I'm long arm. Look, it fits very comfortable. My arms are flexible. I've got the speed hood on, pouring down rain. I can get everything zipped up. One thing they did is they made plenty of pocket space. If you ain't got enough pockets in a Hydronaut rain suit, you just got too much stuff from the water, 
membrane. That's 30K, baby. 30 times the reason you ain't gonna get wet. Super warm. If it's cold in the wintertime, you put on your Hydronaut, you're gonna be a much more comfortable person. If you don't wanna just look sexy at Dairy Queen, where are your Hydronaut? We got it from small to 5X. Most rain gear does not come in that many sizes. You got waist adjusting straps. We can make it fit you. No matter what the environment is, we want you to be comfortable. We want you to be dry. You got to check it out. It ain't going to let you down. All right. Welcome back. A special edition breaking news segment of BTL KVD announcing that 2023 will be his last year fishing professionally. Hard to believe that. We're going to go to the only man in the industry who can actually put this into perspective. Do not try to downplay it. You know that that's the truth, and that is the one and only fishing tackle retailers. Ken Duke covered KVD for very many years through his job at Bass independently, also uh, has has written books, knows everything about this. Ken Duke, <laughs> uh, when I contacted you this morning... Uh, it, this hit the industry as a surprise. This was not something that many people knew was coming down the pipeline today. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that, Matt. I, I think on some level, uh, it's not a surprise. I think uh, I think you and I and a lot of other people have been expecting Kevin maybe to step away at some point. I thought maybe after the third year uh, with MLF, he might do it. Um but yeah, it's a, it's a bittersweet day, of course. Congratulations to the mm -hmm. goat. Uh, it, it's a, it's a shame to see him go because I've certainly enjoyed following his career. I, I think we all have, but um, you know, I, I get it. I think there's been kind of a changing of the guard and I think you and I, and a lot of other people who followed Kevin's career did not expect him to, uh, to, to just hang around and to drift into, uh, competitive insignificance you know that wasn't going to happen for him he was going to get out well before that um let's address the elephant in the room do, do you think this is actually the end for kevin now i know when tom brady said it he really did think it was the end you've got 20 more years with rick clun he's still competitive uh to to, to a winning extent especially we've seen what he's done in florida twice in his 70s uh do you think that that there may be something in the works down the down the road for Kevin to return to this, or do you think that that he really is done at the top level professionally? I'm going to take the man at his word. I'm going to say that he's done at the top level of professional bass fishing. I think that he still has some gas in the tank, but I also think that bass fishing is a very different game than uh, the NFL, where Tom Brady knew he was still able to perform. It's a team game. He was able to go from the, the New England Patriots to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, where they had assembled a team that he knew he could win with. Uh, I think it's very different in, in a sport like bass fishing or, or tennis, uh, where it's an individual sport and, and you have no one else, nothing else to rely on. Although Kevin still has gas in the tank, uh, he's not at the same level he was 10, 20 years ago. And, and I think he realizes that the uh, there's perhaps more to life than just uh, running around the country pulling a bass boat. All right, let's do some some statistics. Let's put this into historical significance. Uh, sure. Ken, why is this such a big deal uh, that 2023 will be his last year fishing professionally for Kevin Van Dam? Why is this such a big deal from a historical significance? Well, the man is the, the best professional angler of all time, and I don't think there's any meaningful debate about that. Uh, he's won seven BASS Angler of the Year titles. He very easy. He he just narrowly missed winning eight. Had he uh, had he not had he fished uh, the Santee Cooper tournament in 2006 and caught one fish, he would have won eight AOYs. He also won an FLW AOY that gets overlooked a lot. He won and those those nine Angler of the Year titles that he all. I'm sorry, let me back up. The seven Angler of the Year titles with Bass is just short of where Roland Martin was, which is nine. Um, he's won four Bass Master Classics, which ties him for the most all time with Rick Clun. He had 28 appearances, which ranks, I think, third. And he had 24 in a row at one stretch, which is the second best stretch anybody ever had. Uh, he limited 57 consecutive days uh, during one stretch of his elite career, limited 57 consecutive days wildly impressive numbers. Uh, so from a purely competitive perspective, purely tournament results kind of perspective, no one can touch Kevin Van Dam. Those stats are great. 
uh, they really kind of do put it into perspective. But from a competition standpoint and the impact that he had on his fellow competitors and how he changed the game of tournament fishing yeah. by his style, talk about that significance. Does does what we're seeing now even look remotely close to what it is if Kevin had not done what he did, particularly uh, in the late 2000s and early 2010s? I love that question, Matt. And and when uh, when you shared the the story with me or the rumor that he was about to announce his retirement, one of the things I sat down was and I I made a little list of the things that that I think Kevin uh, is known for or should be known for, other than the stat type stuff. And uh, and and that question really ties into that. And and one of the things you know that he's so identified with is, is power fishing. Uh, he fishes very fast. He fishes very aggressively. And although there, there were great power fishermen before Kevin Van Dam, he really put his imprint on it. I think uh, Hank Parker was uh, an earlier version of what we now see with Kevin Van Dam and saw for 30 years from Kevin. Uh, but, but power fishing and, and the, the idea that I'm going to go into this area where I know there are fish and I'm going to catch I'm going to, I'm just focusing on the ones that want to eat and I'm going to catch them versus a Denny Brower who might go into an area and try to catch every fish there. Kevin had a different approach. He was going to catch the ones that wanted to eat. He was going to fish fast. He was going to fish aggressively. He was going to move a lot. He was going to expand his pattern every day. Uh, enormously impressive. And, and power fishing is so closely associated with his style. Um, confidence. I have never seen an angler more confident than Kevin Van Dam. Um, I walked into a lot of pregame meetings when I was with Bass, so whether it be for the Bassmaster Classic or an elite event or something like that. And, and uh, Kevin always exuded confidence. And of course, with his kind of track record, if uh, Kevin is exuding confidence, you got to know he's going to be right there. He's going to, if not win the tournament, he's going to be a serious threat. Um, I've never seen such mental toughness from an angler as I saw from Kevin Van Dam for these 30 plus years. I mean, who else have you ever seen? You can, you can see this on old episodes of the Bass Masters, certainly on episodes of, of Major League Fishing, where he's fighting a good fish to the boat. Right at the boat, the fish maybe pops loose. And Kevin uses the momentum of the rod snapping back to load the, the rod to make the next cast all in one motion. That is a kind of, of focus and mental toughness and awareness that you just don't see from anybody else. I've certainly never seen it from anyone else either. Matt, as you know, I think you're going to be right behind me on this one. Kevin is remarkably professional as a, uh, a pro staff angler and a promotional uh, personality. When you call Kevin, he's either going to answer or he's going to call you right back. If he tells you he's tied up right now, but he can get with you in two hours, by God, two hours later, your phone rings and there he is. He's he's enormously professional. And, and that has gone a long way, too, to make him a favorite among media people. You know, when you win everything in sight like Kevin did, naturally, you're going to get a lot of calls from media. But the reason the media wants to work with Kevin is because he's so professional. It is. How much of an impact do you think that had on legitimizing uh, professional bass fishing outside of the industry. Obviously, uh, some of his classics when he won, he went through uh, the wash with ESPN, with uh, with talk shows, uh, the red and black jersey, the iconic black slacks tucked in. Uh, how much do you think that moved the sport forward and added legitimacy to it to have someone like him as the face of it for those who don't see competitive and professional bass fishing on a, on a daily basis? Oh, what a What a tough question. Um, I will say this. I think Kevin's professionalism have has taken bass fishing to the highest levels it has ever achieved. Okay. So whatever bass fishing has done in, in the greater sports world and the greater media world, uh, it owes a significant debt to Kevin Van Dam and his enormous professionalism, his enormous competitiveness and success. Um, he was just, he was exactly the guy you wanted to roll out there to be the face and the personality and, and, and the charm of the sport. He was exactly that guy. You know, he always looked the part. He always played the part. He always said the right things. He was in essence, our Tom Brady, 
and how ironic that that these two guys uh, announced retirement basically within the same week. Of course, Brady did it a year ago, but uh, but how how ironic that they're both retiring at this point. Um, I think uh, bass fishing owes a tremendous debt to Kevin Van Dam because of that. You're in the industry. You're on fishing tackle retailer inside of the industry. Uh, it's well known. Kevin Van Dam has had long-standing relationships with a, a number of partners. Obviously now with Lose, but long time with Quantum, Bass Pro Shops, Toyota, and Strike King. Strike King, yeah. Uh, his name, the initials, uh, attached to so many products that go on the shelves. Talk about the the impact inside the industry that attaching Kevin Van Dam's name to putting a bait that he designed, that he endorsed had in relation to sales throughout the past three decades. Yeah. You know, one of the things I think about often when I see professional anglers, pictures or names, name, likeness, image, all that stuff, mm -hmm. uh, uh, is, is in the 2008, 9, 10, 11 stretch when Kevin was perhaps at his peak, when he won four straight AOI titles with bass, he won, two classics in a row in 2010, 2011. And, and if you look back at it from a purely uh, American economy perspective, those were tough times. We were coming out of, of all the home loan scandals and fiascos and, and the recession of 2008, 9, 10. Yet, yet a company like Strike King rode Kevin Van Dam's coattail to some of the best years they ever had, while other companies struggled uh, that company prospered. And I think that was in no small part to all the success that Kevin was having. They were, they were well-placed being a terminal tackle company, a bait company, but uh, they also had the prodigious coattails of Kevin Van Dam to ride. And, and they were wildly successful during that era as a result. All right, we're going to take uh, take our final uh, quick break here on BTL. And when we come back, I want to get some of your personal stories, some of your fondest memories uh, of KVD. You've been in the trenches with him. You've spent a lot of time around Kevin, uh, Ken. And uh, like I said, KVD announcing this morning came out at uh, a roughly nine, about 10 o'clock central time. Uh, well, nine, what is it? It's 11 now. Yeah. Around 10 o'clock central time, uh, that 2023 will be his last year fishing professionally Stop short of calling it a, a, a full retirement. I mean, he's not going to be in a rocking chair on the back porch. He said, he's still looking forward to being a voice for fishing. The outdoors and conservation is looking forward to his next chapter. So we'll be back with Ken Duke right after this on the BTL breaking news, KVD retirement show. Are you looking to install your own fishing electronics? The solution is the Bass Tank Power Harness. It takes the guesswork out of installation. No more voltage issues or interference. Designed by an engineer so that you can get professional results right there in your own garage. Installation done right with the help of the Bass Tank Power Harness. You can feel confident knowing that your installation was done right. The Bass Tank Power Harness. Give us a call or order yours today at thebasstank.com. Get the best patterns backed by tournament data. Start by finding the best 10% of your lake. Know exactly what to look for and what to throw. After that, you just put them in the boat. Try the Deep Dive app today. Get that beast right there. Elite Series Pro, Daryl Gleason here. My Pro Guide batteries keep me going on those long tournament days and long practice days. Always plenty of juice, never fail. The best part about Pro Guide batteries, it's the people behind the company. They have over 40 years experience in the battery business, keeping all of us fishermen out on the water longer, catching more fish. Check them out at ProGuideBatteries.com. What's up, Bass Talk Live fans? Brandon Polinick here. And ever since I won a couple Bassmaster Elite Series events on X-Zone Lures, I've been getting a bunch of questions of what makes them so special and different. And really, the truth is, it's in the details. The little details, things like no cheap fillers in their plastic. That gives you more lifelike action, more realistic and vibrant colors. But don't just take my word for it. Go to www.xzonelures.com and check them out for yourself. All right, welcome back to BTO with Ken Duke. I'm talking about the KVD 
announcing his retirement from professional bass fishing. What, when did you think it would be, Ken? When did you actually think it would it would happen? Did you think he had he was going to go until he was into his sixties? Did you think that it was going to be something like we just saw today? I thought it would. I thought it would happen either a year or two ago or in the next year or two from now. I really think he maybe picked a sweet spot. Uh, as we said, Kevin still got a lot of gas in the tank. Can he still go out there and be competitive for another five or 10 years if he really wanted it? I think he certainly could, but I'm not sure he would be able to compete on the level that would be satisfactory to Kevin Van Dam. And, and uh, that's why I never expected him to, to linger and hang around and just be the sportsman of the game at the highest level. I didn't think that was a role he he had any interest in playing. And I've heard him say in the past, he didn't, he didn't want to hang around that long. So where does he go following this year? He's obviously going to, to give it everything he has. I wouldn't, ex I, I would, it would not shock me or surprise me, nor would it you for him to go out and, and string off three consecutive victories this year to, <laughs> to make it. And then we get to see him the following year in Redcrest after he qualifies for, for Redcrest in 2024 uh, to win another, an angler of the year on the uh, BPT. But, but off of the water, then, uh, we've seen what Davey Height's been able to do to transform a, an Angler of the Year and Classic career into a very uh, uh, successful career in the in the booth. Uh, we've seen what legends like uh, Bill Dance and Roland Martin have done to transition it into to television shows. Where do you see KVD? He's obviously not going anywhere. He said it. He said he's not retiring. It's just a different chapter. It's not professional fishing. Where do you see him showing up in the next five to 10 years? That's a, I have no idea. Uh, I think Kevin is going to have so many opportunities. Um, and I do expect to see him on television. Do I expect to see him on a regular weekly kind of fishing show? Uh, maybe not. Do I expect to see him following the tour and being a color commentator uh, like a Davy Height? I don't think so because there's a lot of similarity between that and, and the tournament grind, you know, showing up at events, getting up early. I, I think, I think maybe Kevin is, is ready to get away from some of that. Um, I expect he's going to be extremely involved in things like product development mm -hmm. for his existing sponsors. Uh, I expect that he is going to cherry pick the television opportunities that come his way. And if something really cool comes along, I would expect him to jump on that and he'll be good. He'll be really good at that. Um, uh, and I expect him to spend more time with uh, family and friends and, but I don't have a, a clear idea of what his path may be. I think that, uh, I, I envy, I envy him because I think he's making this choice at a great time when he, as I say, still got a lot of gas in the tank and he's still young enough to enjoy the time he has left. It is, uh, Personal stories with Kevin. Anything stick out that you think the the listeners would appreciate and get a different perspective from Kevin? Yeah, I mean, I, so many Kevin Van Dam stories. Um, let me tell you one that that I love. Uh, maybe not everybody out there is aware of of the gamesmanship of Kevin Van Dam, of just how good he was behind the scenes and getting in the heads of the people he was fishing against. Uh, many times I've seen him going into the final day of a tournament uh, where he's in first place or he's in the top three or four and, and, and well within striking distance. I've watched him walk up to the guy in first and say, I hope you catch him today because I am going to wear them out. And he would just spin and walk to his boat. Mm. And you just knew that, that that guy looked stunned at that point. The guy would turn and say, is he trying to get in my head? I'd say, he's already there. He's already there because, you know, that guy was not able to put out of his head that, that Kevin Van Dam is on his trail or Kevin Van Dam is the man he has to catch. And, and then we saw gamesmanship during those postseason events that Bass had in 2010, 2011 out on the Alabama River, where where Kevin wasn't leading the AOI race going into those events. But he won because he was so good at at identifying the rules, identifying the way the competition was laying out. And then using every advantage available to him to to manipulate to uh, to to game the system and win. He was just that good. Uh, he's just that good an angler. He was just that good at strategy. 
he was just that good. Plus, he had the cookies, Matt. My God, he yeah. had the cookies. Sherry's famous cookies. Is there anybody else right now that is that is fishing professionally that will be able to give Kevin a run for his money in? Well, at least I said he did this for 33 years. Is there anybody out there right now who has the ability to touch what Kevin has done and uh, and and catch him in in records, notoriety, wins, etc.? Yeah, I mean, there's obviously a couple of guys who are in a position where they could do something on a scale comparable to what Kevin accomplished. You got to look at guys like Jacob Wheeler, Jordan Lee, Brandon Powell, that guys who are still in their early to mid 30s who have accomplished some AO, got some AOI titles, won some major championships, stuff like that. So, yeah, there, there are some people who could do it, but they're going to have to do something uh, pretty rare. You know, Kevin in that 2000. Um, eight, nine, 10, 11 stretch where he was winning everything in sight. It seemed like a couple of classics. He won four AOIs in a row there at one stretch. Um, that's something that Kevin did in his forties. <laughs> and, and is, is that something mm-hmm. that these other guys are going to find that gear? I, I believe, and I, and the stats are there to back it up. A, a pro angler reaches his peak between ages, say, 30 and 45. And uh, that was true for Kevin, although Kevin got a nice early start and also knocked down some AOYs in his 20s. His first AOY he won when he was 24 years old. Um, yeah, there are some guys who could who could reach those levels, but they're going to have to ratchet up. Uh, and, and, and that's another thing, you know, when, it, when a, a great in any sport or activity retires – whether it be Tom Brady or Michael Jordan or Kevin Van Dam, I'm always a little bit horrified to see how quickly the fan base is ready to identify somebody as the new goat. There are already people talking about Patrick Mahomes as, as the next goat. Well, he just won his second Super Bowl last night. Tom Brady's won seven, went to 10. Um, Mahomes has been to three, won two. Uh, it is way too early to even have that conversation. You know, they were talking about Kobe Bryant uh, when, when Michael Jordan retired. Now it's LeBron James, but, but folks, I I think Kevin Van Dam is going to be the goat for a long, long time. And while, while there will always be people chasing Van Dam's record, um, it's going to be, it's going to be Herculean to get there. And, And Matt, I wanted to mention one more thing about 10 or 12 years ago when I was at Bass um, I actually went to Kevin. It was after he won the 2011 classic. I actually went to Kevin and said, Hey, we need to do a fake retirement press conference. <laughs> we were just going to do it as a lark. You know, I was going to set him up at a, at a table. looks like a press conference. I was going to have people standing around with a lot of flashes going off. And he was going to give a, an April fool's retirement statement basically. But of course we weren't going to run it on April 1st because you know, that's, that's too easy. Um, and I think Kevin was, was into it and, and thought it would be kind of funny, but then he realized that, that he would have to go to each of his sponsors and give them a heads up that this was coming down the pike and it wasn't real. And so it kind of fizzled out, but, uh, Kevin missed opportunity. I got it. Well, like I said, this, there's only, if there's one man who can put, uh, to put KVD's career into perspective and, and the, I think it the thing that I like is I think um I think that Kevin owed it to himself and I think that it is good for the sport uh that that he announces this before the start of this season that it's not a one or two tournament thing that he gets a, a seven or eight events uh he gets a year uh to really um see how much people have appreciated what he's done and how much he has meant to the industry. It's not just a, Hey, I'm out of here thing, which I could also have seen Kevin doing that. He's never been a, a, uh, a flashy showboaty, you know, type of guy to be like, Hey, look, I'm retiring. But I think that, uh, I think it's good for the sport that we get a, a year to say goodbye to him in this capacity as a, uh, as the, uh, greatest professional tournament angler in the history of the sport. I, I agree. And 
and you know, you think of that as a farewell tour sometime, but obviously I don't think of this as a farewell for Kevin Van Dam, mm-hmm. just a changing of gears. Yep. And uh, I think there's going to be plenty of opportunities for, for folks to see Kevin at Bass Pro Shops opening or, oh, or yeah. things like that. Yeah. But uh, congratulations to the, to the greatest of all time. The weird thing to me is, you know, you always think in the back of your head, he'll get classic number five. He'll get 10 <laughs> angler of the years. Like, I mean, I remember during that string covering it when he had four, five, six, and seven, it was like, dude, he's going to have this in the next three years. I remember when he wins the, uh, wins the fourth classic. Well, you know, is it going to be next year? Is he going to go back to back to back again? Like, when's he going to have the five? So, um, uh, a lot of history there with a lot of unanswered questions from the bass side of it, just with the way that the sport split in 2019. And, you know, and Matt, I'm sorry to, to drag this no. on because I know you're trying to wrap this up, but no, you no, know, no, we're what, good. what you and I saw so many times, but, but the fans sitting at home didn't was Kevin won all these tournaments, these 25 bass events, these uh, four bass master classics under the toughest conditions imaginable. When he launched, he would have 50, 75, 150 boats following him every day. And yet he would still find a way to win. He would still find a way to manage his water. He knew he couldn't go back. If he if he did well in a particular area on one day, the likelihood of him being able to go back the next day was was gone. And other a lot of other anglers didn't have anything like that to overcome. That's a really good point. All right. Well, I knew that we were going to have a breaking new show at some point on this just based on what went down this morning uh i didn't know it would be this soon so i want to thank you for jumping on at the drop of a hat you've always taken care of btl greatly appreciate it the btl listeners love your perspective and what you bring to it ken duke thank you matt i also want to have a big shout out to mark zona for jumping on uh a, a I can't thank Mark enough. He's on his way to a deal. He pulled over. He said, whatever you need. And then also for Joe Pogger from MLF for setting up the KVD interview to get Kevin on this as well. Like I said, Mark Zona, KVD, and Ken Duke. When KVD announces that he's retired, and I couldn't think of three better guys to have on within the first half hour. Also, the BTL listeners for jumping on uh, and paying attention to that. That is what this whole thing was about with the new studio, with moving it to have breaking news, to bring uh, the important people uh, at important times and help to put it into perspective under the three E's of educate, entertain, and engage. And a a big shout out to all those people who made that happen today, including the BTL sponsors. who, who back BTL and allow me to sit here and do breaking news segments like this. I was shocked, man. I got to admit, I was a little surprised when I saw it. I, I thought he had another, I, I thought it would be five years. I really did. I thought it would be five years from now, but it wasn't, it was today, February 13th that he announced it. Now he will be fishing this week. So, and, and moving forward in 2013, we got a farewell tour for KVD. Ken Duke host of the big bass podcast with Terry Batista. When you're done listening to this, go over, download, watch, share. They got a good thing going over there. All sorts of cool stories about miss giant fish that weren't giant fish that were it's good stuff. Ken Duke. Thank you for jumping on BTL's breaking news on February 13th. Thank you, Matt. All right. We'll talk to everybody tomorrow. This has been BTL later. <laughs>